of lambda times absolute value of xv plus twice cardinality of gamma of v intersected with w times the norm of x u infinity. And here we are going to use delocalization. And actually, we are going to use two types of delocalization at the same time, L infinity and no gaps. First, let's use the L infinity delocalization. And the L infinity delocalization tells us that with high probability, the norm of x, uh, sorry, the norm of x infinity, let's use just one coordinate, is bounded by a constant log n to the constant over square root of n. Uh, this was proved by uh, Erdős, Knowles, Yao, Yin. And there are different exponents, c small, for bulk and for the edge. But we are not going into these details. Just one absolute constant will be enough for us. So this is, roughly speaking, over 1 over square root of n. And lambda is a non-first eigenvalue. It is bounded by c square root of n times the, uh, this coordinate is bounded by L infinity norm. So C log to the Cn over square root of n plus <sighs> twice. And here, I have already prepared the bound for this set. The size of W is, uh, if P is a constant, is uh, C log squared n times uh, log to the cn over square root of n. So this is a small change. The, the dominating term is here. It's bounded by c log to the cn. Okay. A second. Yeah. Perfect. So we bounded the L1 norm. Now let's pass to the L2 norm. And hence, the norm of x reduced to gamma of v. L2 is less or equal than the square root of the norm of x infinity times the norm of x reduced to uh, gamma L1. And again, I use the L infinity delocalization. This, uh, this is C log over square root of n. This is log to the Cn. So it's less or equal than a constant n to the negative 1 quarter log to the Cn. This number is tiny. At the same time, the cardinality of gamma of v, so gamma of v is the set of all vertices connected to v. This is, uh, the, its cardinality is the degree of v, and the average degree is np, and it's concentrated about np. So with high probability, cardinality of gamma of v is greater than np over 2. 
Okay. And I have a set of coordinates of large cardinality which carries a very small L2 norm. This, would, uh, this contradicts no gaps delocalization. So the, uh, the assumption that we have a vector in the exceptional, uh, a vertex in the exceptional set is incorrect, and we proved the Aurora Bhaskara theorem. Okay. This is a typical situation that two types of delocalization, L infinity and no gaps, work hand in hand. And let me describe another such situation uh, the brace paradox. The brace paradox was observed by civil engineers in the 60s of the previous century. And it says that if you add a highway to the existing highway networks, you may increase congestion. This is counterintuitive, but this happens in practice. And there were attempts to explain brace paradox mathematically. And the, uh, the most popular model was uh, suggested by Fan Chang, who uh, formulated it as follows. Let's model, we have to model the highway network, and we have to model the congestion. So for the high, uh, highway network, she took an order Schrodinger graph. This may feel a little far-fetched, but at least <laughs> this is the first step. So we will consider an order Schrodinger graph, and what is the congestion? Uh, to formalize it, let's recall that if you run a random walk on a graph, this uh, random walk mixes and its relaxation time, not mixing time, but relaxation time, is the reciprocal of the second eigenvalue of the Laplacian. The first eigenvalue of the Laplacian is zero. The second is what is called the spectral gap. So it is the reciprocal of the spectral gap. And since it's uh, mixing of a random walk is related to the uh, traffic capacity of, of the network, we will say that the congestion is measured in terms of the spectral gap. So let me write the spectral gap of what? We will consider the normalized Laplacian. So let's take the adjacency matrix of uh, the Erdős Rényi graph, and then dg will be a diagonal matrix with degrees on the diagonal, and then we normalize the adjacency matrix by this uh, degree matrix, and we get the, what is called the normalized Laplacian. Okay, so the conjecture of Chang. was that if you take an order Schrödinger graph and take independently a random pair of uh, vertices conditioned on that they are not connected by an edge, and add this edge to the graph, then with positive probability, the spectral gap will decrease. And positive would be independent of n. So we have two, two probability spaces, the space, the, the ambient space of the graph and the space in which we add the edges, not, in order not to mix them, 
I'll talk about the proportion of ed edges which lead to the decreasing of the spectral gap. So let A minus of G be the proportion of non edges such that adding one of them decreases the spectral gap. And then the conjecture of Chang was that the probability that A minus of G is uh, greater uh, than some constant C is greater or equal than an absolute constant C prime. This uh, seems counterintuitive because adding an, an edge to a graph uh, brings it closer to the complete graph and the complete graph has the maximal spectral gap. But ne uh, nevertheless, this conjecture was proved very recently by L. Dan, Raz, and Schramm. And we are going to prove a little stronger version of this conjecture. We will prove it with c equals 1 half. So, Surprisingly, if you add uh, a random non-edge to the graph, the spectral gap decreases with probability at least one half. To do it, we have to analyze when the spectral gap decreases. And this job was done for us by Eldan Razen-Schramm. This is a deterministic statement. It's, uh, a linear algebra, or the, the, a rather tedious linear algebra, that if you have a graph so that the degrees of, of uh, the vertices are commensurate, and you take an eigenvector, the second eigenvector of the Laplacian, then if uh, we have a non-edge and the coordinates uh, of the eigenvector satisfy this inequality, then the addition of, a, of this non-edge to the graph decreases the spectral gap. The proof is a, a rather tedious calculation, but it's straightforward. You just uh, write uh, the uh, definition of the second eigenvalue using the Rayleigh uh, quotient. And uh, you know the, uh, the difference between the adjacency matrix of the graph and the graph ed with added edge. And uh, you know the first eigenvector of the graph and the first eigenvector of the graph with an added edge. You just write this Rayleigh quotient, cancel what you can cancel, you get uh, the a theorem of Eldan, Raz, and Schramm. Now, so let's prove the, uh, the result. And as you see, I have uh, uh, this additional term is very small. Let's say p is constant, it's 1 over n squared. And the coordinates are typically 1 over square root of n, so this is 1 over n 
and this is, uh, will make it 1 over n to the 3 halves. So this term can be, uh, cannot do much harm. And what we have to compare is uh, x u squared plus x v squared over x u x v. This is the interesting quantity. So what can we say about the vector x? The vector x is an eigenvector of the Laplacian. And uh, uh, we can apply delocalization. Although there is a small caveat, we proved delocalizations for the adjacency matrix. This is not adjacency matrix, but I it doesn't play much role, it just shifts the spectrum. And these dg are the, uh, the, the, the matrices of the degrees. If p is constant, then the degrees are highly concentrated. The degrees are almost np with a, now, with the small change. So the matrix d to the negative one half is almost a diagonal matrix with the, with np's on the diagonal. And this means that an eigenvector of the Laplacian will not be precise eigenvector of the adjacency matrix, but it will be an approximate eigenvector of the adjacency matrix. You can estimate the error using the error in the degrees. And we can handle approximate eigenvectors. So they are delocalized in both senses, which means that the L infinity norm of x is bounded by, if you do the accurate calculation, it is, you, uh, you get an error because the degrees are non-constant and it's not one over square root of n, it's c n to the negative one fourth log n to the c. And uh, the calculation can be found in the notes. And also we have no gaps delocalization, which means that uh, if I exclude a set w, uh, there is a set w of vertices such that the cardinality of w of v minus w is small and to the, say, one. Uh, one minus uh, something one over t eight uh, such that uh, for any uh, v w in the set w, we have that x w is greater or equal than we wish to have n to the negative one half. But again, uh, since we are dropping a set of cardinality uh, O small of n, we incur some error. This will be n to the negative 5 eighths. Uh, the reason for it is the no gaps delocalization. If uh, I look at the complement of W, on the complement I have the opposite inequality. And if I have the opposite inequality coordinate wise, I can estimate the L2 norm, which falls on the set V minus W. And this L2 norm will be small. And if the norm is small, the set cannot be large according to the, the no gaps delocalization. So, we have that typically the coordinates are large with high probability and all coordinates are also small uh, with high probability. Okay, so let's look now at this ratio. 
and let's take the maximum of this over, say, u and v in, uh, in the positive set. Not positive nodal domain. We didn't talk about the nodal domain of the normalized Laplacian, but in the positive set. So x u and x v are positive. This can be written as, if I cancel, say, x u, this is the maximum, at, at most twice the maximum over u v in p of x u over x v. And this is less or equal than c and to the negative three eighth log to the C N. Okay, this is small. This is much less than N to the negative one half, which means that the additional term in Aldan Raz Shram theorem doesn't matter. And so this inequality would hold, uh, sorry, n to the 3 eighths, sorry, n to the 3 eighths, it's maximum over minimum. And if I divide it by square root of n, this is much less than 1. And it means that if I have a non edge uv, such that both coordinates x, u, and x, v are positive, then adding this non-edge would decrease the spectral gap. The same way, if I have a non-edge in the negative set, then both x, u, and x, v are negative, and this fraction is positive, and the same argument shows that if I connect, so if I have the positive nodal domain and add a non-edge, or if I have a negative nodal domain and add a non-edge, the spectral gap decreases. Again, this is based on combination of L-infinity delocalization and no gaps delocalization. The rest is bookkeeping. Let's count the number of non-edges in positive and negative set. So A minus of G, the proportion of non-edges which lead to the decrease of the spectral gap is less or equal than the number of non-edges intersected with P plus the number, uh, sorry, the number of, yes, plus the number of non edges intersected with n over the number of non edges and now we have to estimate this fraction and again, there is a, the number of non-edges may be calculated for an Erdős-Rényi graph, and this is highly concentrated. The, the average number of non-edges is the number, uh, the possible number of edges times one minus p, because we do not connect an edge, edges with probability one minus p, and then we have an error term. So this is. Uh, cardinality, uh, sorry, uh, cardinality of p choose 2 plus uh, times 1 minus p plus uh, card uh, 1 minus p cardinality of n choose 2 over uh, the, uh, the cardinality of v 
choose two, and V is T union N because uh, uh, I considered positive and negative sets. I don't claim anything about the nodal domains here. Okay, let's bound. Uh, sorry, A, it's great or equal. Maybe some edges in between also contribute to the uh, uh, to the spectral gap. So if I, I want a lower estimate, I have plus and minus the error, 2n to the 3 halves, and plus, two, uh, plus n to the, uh, to the 3 halves. The cardinality of v is n, so this n to the 3 halves is negligible, and this is the cardinality of p plus the cardinality of n, and this can be bounded below by uh, the cardinality. So, cardinality of uh, p choose 2 is uh, cardinality p squared over 2 plus a linear term the same way I treat this, and then I use the convexity of, this, uh, of the square function, I get the cardinality of p plus the cardinality of n is greater or equal than the cardinality of n p, uh, plus the cardinality of n over 2 squared uh, over the here I do the same thing. This is the cardinality of v squared over 2 plus O small of 1. And the cardinality of p plus the cardinality of n is n. So I get 1 half plus O small of 1 as claimed. And we, this way we proved the conjecture of Fan Chang, and moreover, we proved a stronger result with c equals one half, and this would be a good point to stop. And any questions from Mark? Yes, uh, if you, uh, let's, uh, if, uh, let me swipe to the, uh, to the delocalization theorem. Everything is based on the delocalization, and the delocalization requires uh, that A are not contained in the small disks. Let me write what it means. Precisely, it's for any Z complex, the probability that absolute value A i j minus Z is less than C1 is uh, less than C2, where C2 is a constant less than 1. What happens if we consider the Schrenny graphs with a small p? Then the value of the adjacency matrix may be zero, and zero occurs with probability one minus p. So we have to trace the uh, dependence of uh, constants and no gaps delocalization on the constant C2, and uh, the proof shows clearly that it's polynomial, which means that I can go down to p which is n to the negative alpha, where alpha is some constant in 0, 1. Can we get to uh, uh, 
alpha uh, close to one, and can we get to the subpolynomial level? I don't know. Okay, so uh, let's all thank Mark again.